Captain's log, stardate 5444.9. The Enterprise is on a charting run through the partially explored Moran sector. Since this region seems relatively devoid of suns and planets, we expect to be finished here in a few days. Kirk out. Not soon enough for me, Captain. Bored, Mr. Connors? I thought you liked solitude and quiet. I do, Captain, but there are limits to one's ability to enjoy nothingness. Look at the screen. No planets worthy of investigating. Hardly any stars, not even any interesting phenomena like quasars or black holes or redisars. Just parsecs and parsecs of nothing. We should be through here by tomorrow, ship time, Connors. In the meantime... <whistles> Lieutenant Uhura. Yes, Captain? Aren't you going to acknowledge? Acknowledge what, Captain? Wasn't that an incoming communication? No, sir. I thought it came from the navigation console. Mr. Sulu. Uh, not from here, sir. There, that's it. All systems neutral, Captain. It's not any of our instrumentation. What is it, Mr. Spock? I don't know, Captain. I've never heard anything quite like it. Commencing sensor scat. Uhura. Are you sure nothing's trying to call in? Positive, Captain. No one on board is sending either. Mr. Sulu, Mr. Connors? All clear, Captain. No sign of any auditory malfunction. All instruments functioning normally. Connors, are you sure there's no ship out there? Certain, Captain. If there is, it doesn't register on our screens. Mr. Spock, anything from the computer? Nothing definite, Captain. We appear to have encountered a previously unknown physical phenomenon. There are faint indications it is highly localized while remaining diffused. That's contradictory, Mr. Spock. Quite, Captain. The computer is equally confused. There's one more possibility... All hands, this is the captain speaking. I'm aware that this assignment has been less than exciting thus far. This is no excuse for interfering with ship's communications. Whoever is generating semi-musical noises on the bridge will please cease such activities immediately. I guess that... I don't think this is the product of someone's peculiar sense of humor, Captain. This doesn't sound like any kind of music I've ever encountered. I have to agree, Spock. But if the source isn't outside the ship and it isn't inside, then where is it coming from? An excellent question, Captain. Captain's log supplementary. The mysterious music has been with us for three days now and gives indications of increasing rather than abating. Every effort to locate some source for the sounds has proven futile. We are no closer to an explanation now than we were days ago. I feel it incumbent on me to point out that if this keeps up, crew efficiency is bound to suffer. I'm aware of the problem, Mr. Spock. There doesn't seem to be any way to shut out the sound except by plugging one's ears. It's still hard to sleep, and we can't have everyone walking around with earplugs. I can't run this ship by sign language. Speaking of earplugs, Spock, please, Doctor, for once try to be serious. Besides, I believe I have isolated the cause of the sound. If it's a natural phenomenon, it behaves in the most unexpected fashion. Rising in certain sections of the ship while falling in others, as if it were moving bodily about. Oh, come on, Spock. There are definite modulations in the noise which suggest other than random origin. Some possess almost vocal undertones. I am left with only one hypothesis that we are being visited by a being of pure sound. Pure sound, pure hogwash. The most ridiculous part of it is, I think you're right, Spock. I only wish there was some way we could tell it to shut up. It's driving me crazy. It keeps getting louder. Do you think it's aware of us as intelligences, Bones? I don't know, Jim. It's an incredible theory, but as Spock says, Nothing else seems to fit. I've already had some cases of people who can't get to sleep even with strong earplugs. I've got a solution to that, at least for the worst cases. What's that? There's Chapel is monitoring the shuttle. 
The influence of this noise doesn't extend beyond the ship. Once outside, people can sleep in peace again. But the shuttle will only hold so many, even in relays. We've got to find a way to turn it off. I might add, Captain, that we have no way of estimating the volume this creature can produce. It could conceivably drive everyone on board permanently deaf, if not stopped. I might as well share the rest of the bad news with you. Lieutenant Uhura, tell them. You see, the deep space beam is useless, all channels. All I can get is static or variations on the central musical rhythm. We're cut off. I'm still keeping several channels open for incoming calls, however. Maybe someone will listen in and be able to tell we're in trouble. More likely, they'll just think we're having a heck of a party. That leaves us with only one choice. Somehow we're going to have to make contact with this thing. Tell it what it's doing. Make it understand. Spock, do you think it's capable of communicating? If so, Captain, it has not responded to any of the several attempts I've made. If it does comprehend, it is choosing to ignore our voices, codes, and screen signs I've displayed throughout the ship. Can't we fight back somehow, Spock? Fight pure sound, Doctor. How? We could overpower it with more sound. That might drive us insane or deaf faster than the creature. It might also anger it. It might find a blast of artificial sound challenging like another of its own kind. I cannot imagine what its belligerent response would be except to guess it would not be pleasant. Everyone okay? That one hurt. All right here, Captain, but half the transparent facings on my instruments are gone. Damage reports coming in, Captain, from all over the ship. The danger is no longer theoretical, Captain. The creature appears able to reproduce any frequency it desires. Presumably, it is potentially capable of sonically destroying any substance on board. Whether it is doing this intentionally or inadvertently will not matter if it happens to hit upon the resonating factor of the human bone. We've got to make contact somehow. It may be trying to contact us, Jim. It's liable to end up killing us trying to contact us. There's got to be a way. Mr. Sulu? Mr. Connors? Where's Lieutenant Connors? He left a few minutes ago, Captain, during that painful burst of noise. I... Lieutenant Connors, you left your post without... What is that thing? If someone would lend me aid. Here, let me. I recognize it, Captain. An Edoan Elysiar. The triple keyboard operates an echo chamber. Resonating bars made of bone. And something that rather resembles an earthly xylophone twisted into a Mobius strip. What are you going to do, Mr. Connors? Captain... The noise! My ears! Connors, what are you... I'm going to attempt to communicate with it, Captain. The only way we haven't yet tried. Mr. Spock spoke of fighting noise with noise. Somehow I feel there is a thing here that it needs to be understood, not fought. I will start by improvising, trying to work from one of the aliens' themes. Music. We didn't try music. Continue, Connors. Reacting, Jim. It understands. Keep playing, Lieutenant. The universal language. Music. We've said it for thousands of years. I never thought I'd see it interpreted literally. Stay with it, Connors. I'm trying, Captain. How lovely. The alien as symphony. There's a logical classification for you, Spock. Mathematical precision is certainly inspiring, Doctor. Captain, I'm getting tired. I don't know if I can keep up. You've got to, Connors. We can't risk breaking off now. We may never re-establish contact again. Jim, how are we going to explain to it what we want it to do? I don't know. Spock? I don't know either, Captain. I don't know if the terms music and language are truly interchangeable. Connors, play something sad. Convince it all is not well. logic to its sounds. Emotion, you mean. Jim, maybe it... No, it didn't understand. 
understand. It didn't understand at all. It's no good, Jim. It didn't work. Wait, Bones. Give it time. Connor! Captain! I can't keep up. I can't. It's not possible. Do your best, Mr. Connors. It's gone. It's finally gone. Gone where, Jim? Who knows, Bones? We don't know where it came from. We can't imagine where it goes. I hope it went away happy. Perhaps someday, when we understand a little more about how our own music affects us, we'll be ready to understand and communicate with creatures like it a little better. I heard a voice crying in the wilderness. What was that, Lieutenant? Nothing, sir. All channels appear clear now. Shall I contact the nearest Starfleet base? No, no, we don't appear to have sustained any serious damage. We'll finish this charting run as planned. Mr. Connors, thank you. My arms feel like two corings of a planetary center, Captain. But I believe I actually enjoyed it. I've never had such a fluid, responsive musical partner. Did you say something, Bones? Hmm? Oh, I was just wondering, Jim. Do you think we'll ever find it again? I think so, Bones. When we're able to talk to it. I think it wanted to talk to us. It'll be back. Bones, have you ever listened to any violin concertos? I'm not much of a classical aficionado, Jim. There are times when that lone violin is up there against all those other instruments, and they're quiet. And that one violin is the loneliest sound in the world. I think our visitor meant us no harm. It was just plain lonely. Mr. Connors, maintain course. Mr. Sulu, Mr. Spock, resume charting procedures. You keep that thing quiet. Sorry, Jim. Doesn't like the siege. <sighs> Captain's log, start date 5440. We have been assigned to... Meow! Bones! All right, Jim. I'll take it down to sick bay and house it with our experimental animals. Just remember, I was prepared to treat an ambassador, not to babysit an ill-tempered tabby. I understand, Bones. We're all upset about it. Yeoman, give me a hand with this, will you please? Y yes, sir. I confess, Captain, that for a change, I find myself empathizing with Dr. McCoy. This is a considerable disappointment. For me too, Spock. Captain's log, start date 5440. The Enterprise has been ordered to transport the pet Wa'ul of the Mawavian ambassador from Centaurus base to his home world of Moab. We are proceeding on course as rapidly as possible. Mr. Sulu. Captain. How long till orbit insertion around Moab? Approximately two standard weeks, six hours, 30 minutes, sir. Two weeks? Removing a Starfleet cruiser from commission for two weeks just to pamper someone's pet. It does seem rather extraordinary, Captain. But then the Moabian situation is extremely delicate. At the moment, they are... But since they lie near both the Federation and the Klingon Empire, it seems certain they will eventually ally themselves with one or the other. Moavians are an advanced, logical people. Logical? Do you call the Moavian ambassador's concern over his pet logical? Logic and affection are not necessarily mutually exclusive, Captain. I speak from personal experience. I had a pet Salot once that... Maybe so, Spock. But when you expect to play host to a full ambassador and find yourself carrying a cross between a nervous bobcat and a furry lizard... Kirk here. Jim, you were worried about this being a dull trip? What's happened, Bones? Yeoman Prentice and I were moving the Wa'ul into sick bay. We bumped into a wall making the turn, and apparently the Wa'ul panicked. We dropped the cage, and the blasted latch broke. The Wa'ul got out. Got out? All right. Where is it now? Well, that's the trouble, Jim. We don't know. You know how timid it's been since the Moabian crew sent it aboard. When the latch went, it took off down the corridor like a shot. You let it get away, Doctor. Who's that? Spock? 
Listen, Spock, that thing's got claws as long as my middle finger. I'm a doctor, not an animal trainer. Not that we didn't try. Prentice took a dive at it. His arm should stop bleeding any minute now. For the horsehead nebula, what next? Okay, Bones, stay where you are. Mr. Spock. Captain. Take a security crew or two down there. Use nets. We'll have an interstellar incident on our hands if that wawool is hurt. Yes, Captain. Uhura, broadcast a warning for all hands to keep an eye out for the animal. Most of them have seen pictures of it. Seal all decks above and below sick bay. At least we can keep it in one area. Very good, Captain. Put me on the intercom. I'll do it myself. This is the captain speaking. The Moavian Wawul, the pet of the Moavian ambassador to the Federation, has escaped. It's loose somewhere near sick bay. Yeoman Prentice has already been injured attempting to recapture it. I want no more such injuries. Anyone sighting the creature is to contact security immediately. Make no attempt to approach it. Kirk out. Where did you last see it, Doctor? Took the branch to the left, Spock. I don't think it went too far. It's probably cowering in a dark corner somewhere nearby, waiting for kindly old Spock to pick it up. Oh, Mr. Spock. Yes, Yeoman? Uh, see this arm? If you're going to pick it up, do it carefully. I'll... Remember that, Yeoman. Spock? Did I just hear you yowl? Yowl? Dr. McCoy, I'm meow. sure I don't meow. know what you're talking about. There, you did it again. Really, Doctor, I hardly think this is the time for levity. You with the nets, stand ready. Half of the group will scan each room while the rest of you block any exit. Clear? Aye, aye, All sir. right, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Prentice, did you hear it too? Hear what? Is that so? You better pay more attention, Yeoman, or you'll never rise above. Good hypocrites. Did I just growl at you, Prentice? A holy reaction. Me too. Captain? What is it, Lieutenant? I'm getting some very strange reports from Sick Bay level. In what way strange? Well, sir, there are several reports of fights breaking out among the crew. Fighting? Yes, sir, but that's not what's so peculiar. The voices of those reporting in, they tend to be... I thought it might be static, but not on every channel. Tend to sound like snarling, sir. Easy, Lieutenant. Those kinds of reports can upset anyone. It's true, sir. They sound almost cat-like. Wait a second. Here's another one. Put it on the bridge speakers, Lieutenant. This is security officer Gibson reporting. Captain, I need help down here. Discipline is breaking down throughout this level, I think. Get away from me. Gibson, Gibson, this is the captain speaking. Report. That's enough, Captain. Monitoring all calls will be further for security. Aye, sir. What do you make of it, Mr. Sulu? I don't know, sir. I never heard anything quite like it. Hmm. Lieutenant Uhura, locate Mr. Spock. I want to find out what's going on down. That won't be necessary, Captain. That you, Mr. Mr. Spock? What in heaven's name happened? Happened, Captain? Oh, you mean these scratches. Scratches? Spock, your arms. The upper half of your uniform. It's difficult to say precisely, Captain. We thought we detected the crying of the Wa'ul in a small storage chamber. I set a cordon of men with nets to block off the only entrance. We started to go in after it when... when... Yes, Spock? I'm not sure. I experienced a sudden desire to run, to hide. It was fear, but not in the logical sense. It was entirely instinctive and irrational. I found myself striking out around me, desperate. The others were doing the same. I saw everything through a red haze. Something was telling me I had to get away. Get away, get away. Oh, Spock, are you all right? I'm okay now, Captain. The influence seems to grow weaker as you move away from it. What influence? That, Captain, is exactly what I'd like to know. Captain, I have... I told you to hold any further reports of conflict, Lieutenant. This isn't a combat report, sir. It's Dr. McCoy. Bones, put him through. 
Jim, what's going on? I've got cases of lacerations and bruises piling up down here faster than Chapel and I can treat them. Some of the injured are violent. I'm having a hard time keeping them under <laughs> sedation. Bones, did you just snarl? I guess I must have, Jim. Spock didn't notice it right away either. There's something that sneaks into your mind. Can you describe it? Some influence overpowers your emotions and thoughts. The soul urges to strike out and run in blind panic. That's it. Panic. How about the source? I believe there is only one logical possibility, Captain. Just a minute, Bones. What, Mr. Spock? We are being subjected to a mass telepathic projection of considerable raw power. A projection emphasizing panic and fear. There is only one entity aboard which could be expected to be experiencing such feelings. The Moravian Wau. Bones, did you? I heard, Jim. And I wish somebody would do something about it fast. The thing's strength seems to be increasing. Our latest cases are requiring heavier and heavier sedation. Do the best you can, Bones. I'll get back to you. Suggestions, Mr. Spock? We have little information on Moab and less on this creature. I recommend contacting the Waul's owner for instructions. The ambassador? Spock, you know I can't do that. Moab is a diplomatic flashpoint. If we get in touch with them and confess we can't even handle a single pet, what are they going to think of our capabilities? More than they will if we <laughs> arrive. What do you mean, Spock? I can feel it again, Captain. The influence. Dr. McCoy is right, as far as he goes. As the violence around it increases, the Wa'ul becomes more frightened. The more frightened it becomes, the stronger its defensive projection grows. We could lose control of the Enterprise. You really think it could go that far, Spock? Wow. You see, Captain, soon even coherent speech will become impossible. Lieutenant Uhura, contact Moab. Get us through to the Ambassador to the Federation. <laughs> Do it yourself, Captain. Uhura! I'm sorry, sir. Something just... Forget it. I have contact, sir. Put him on the screen. This is Ambassador Ovid speaking. Your trip is proceeding pleasantly, Captain? I'm afraid not, Mr. Ambassador. We have a bit of a... <laughs> ...problem. Your pet was accidentally set loose on board a little while ago. He was? Escaped? Captain, I'm shocked. Not as shocked as I am at you, Mr. Ambassador. Do you know that it's against Federation law to transport an animal which can endanger the lives of a crew without suitable pre-notification? But, Captain Kirk, Ewas is no danger if he is kept in his cage and properly treated. You didn't plan all this, then? Plan, Captain? I don't know what you mean. It would be an excellent way of testing our mental strength. Captain Kirk, I resent your insinuations. I shall file a formal protest with your government. Excellent. It'll go well with my report. Come now, Captain. Such unpleasantness isn't like you. Are you by chance feeling out of sorts? As if you didn't know. How do we go about recapturing your wowl? That does present a problem, doesn't it? The more frightened Iwas becomes, the harder it will be to approach him while retaining one's own thoughts. How long has he been free? Spock? About 40 minutes, Captain, I should guess. Two-thirds of a ship hour, Mr. Ambassador. A long time. How about telling us how to shorten it? But that's just it, Captain Kirk. You see, we don't know how to recapture a terrified Wa'ul either. The only thing I can suggest is to get within, let's see, 300 of your meters of him and shoot him full of Pac-M or LQ tranquilizer. Pac- I- A Moravian drug, Captain. I doubt we have any aboard. Even if we did, we can't shoot around 300 meters of corners. I am sorry for you then, Captain. You must let me know if you come up with a solution. And now you must excuse me. I have an important appointment with the Minister for Foreign Affairs. Wait a minute, you can't just... Transmission terminated, sir. I'm attempting to re-establish, but they don't acknowledge. Keep trying. Mr. Spock? I see no choice but to make another attempt with the Mets. All right. Good luck. Needs it. Sorry, Captain. The influence. I know, Mr. Spock. I can feel it myself now. Lieutenant, any luck? No, sir. I will continue to... Never. Mind. Get me sick bay. Sick bay. Dr. McCoy here. Bones, the Moavian ambassador said a couple of strains 
M or LQ of a tranquilizer called PAC would put the Wa'ul under. PAC? Never heard of it. We've had practically no exchange of information yet with Moabian medical personnel, let alone veterinarians. Check the medical computer anyhow. Maybe there's a hypothesized Federation analog. I'll try, Jim, but we're pretty busy down here. I need that drug, Bones. I'll see what I can dig up. Sick bay out. Mr. Sulu, take the helm. I'm going with Mr. Spock. Yes, sir. Uhura, if you or Sulu find yourselves going under the influence of this thing, put out an automatic mayday describing our situation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This the corridor? Oh. Or Spock? Oh. Yes, Captain. You can fight it a little, but it digs at you. Pounds away like a hammer. Like a hammer? Spock, I just had an urge to take a swing at you. I am experiencing similar leanings towards belligerent action, Captain. We should be nearing the Wa'u's last known hiding place. It's Wa'u growing stronger, Mr. Spock. Wa'u, I, I can't. It's, it's just sitting there, Spock. Yes, Captain. It's truly frightened. Just another few meters, Captain. Get it on yourself, Spock. Captain, must get away. Get away. Tear, kill. Captain, Mr. Spock, what's going on here? Telepathic. Screen. I heard it's the animal there, isn't it? The wow. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Nice kitty, kitty. Lieutenant Morris, be careful. Dangerous. Nonsense. Nice kitty. Armalurvo. <laughs> Mr. Spock, you all right? Yes, Captain. I must report myself under arrest for assaulting... No, Spock. You had no control over your thoughts. Is this poor, scared little fur ball what's been causing all the ruckus? Listen to it purr, Spock. Lieutenant Morris, what did you do to it? Do? Why, nothing, Captain. It was frightened out of its mind, that's all. I was off duty asleep until the noise of fighting in the corridor outside disturbed me. I learned what was happening and was on my way to the bridge when I saw you and Mr. Spock fighting. There, there, it's all right now. But why? Naturally, Lieutenant Mares is not affected. She is a feline ancestry herself and clearly able to empathize with primitive feline thoughts. The Wa'ul detected assurance in a kindred spirit and at once relaxed. Lieutenant, you're hereby relieved of communications duties until we arrive at Moab and deliver this pet to Ambassador Oavid. Till then, your sole responsibility will be to see to the care and feeding of Iwas here. <laughs> Captain, have you managed to... Iwas is safe and content, Mr. Ambassador. Lieutenant Mares, one of our communications officers, is a Cation. She was able to calm it instantly. Excellent news, Captain. Having a crew comprised of many races is a definite advantage. It speaks well of your Federation. I am looking forward to meeting you on your arrival. Please be exceptionally gentle with Iwas in the next time periods, though. We'll be as gentle as we can, of course, and why the sudden concern? You mean you didn't know, Captain? An oversight on the part of the crew which delivered her to you. Her? I thought you said him. An oversight on my part. Iwas is pregnant. She'll have kittens in a few days, I suspect. You can expect to have between six and ten additional little wauls before you arrive here at Moab. Carry on, Captain. Mr. Spock, inform Lieutenant Morris she's about to become a mother. Inform Dr. McCoy also. And tell him to be careful during delivery. We wouldn't want either mother or children to get frightened, would we? No, Captain. Wow.